I'm outside of my usual format again, so you can probably tell we have a special feature today. Something which could only be described as a departure from standard and a slow descent into chaos. Happy chaos, of course. Yes, we are doing card reviews for the upcoming English edition original set Guilty Gear Strife today. As some of you will remember, I've had card reviews before on YST Time, but they were in the form of written trial deck reviews, so this is something entirely new to me today. Uh, I do still have some trial deck cards to show you guys, and I think we'll start with those, uh, but later I will also get to review some cards from the booster pack, which I am extremely excited for. Um, so yeah, let's get into it, let's get some cards up here, uh, and let's take a look at what's in the trial deck first. Starting off, we have the familiar trial deck package of Happy Chaos Gunslinger, and Eno's staff interview. Happy Chaos has a bond ability that lets you grab a copy of Eno from the waiting room, and he also boosts all copies of her by 2000 power. Now, she already looks plenty strong enough to me, but if you want to have her at 9000 or over 9000 power, you can. Moving on, Eno Malicious Intent brings another common trial deck effect to the table. A brainstorm for 5 cards that lets you draw a card for each climax revealed. And once per turn, when you use an act ability, she also lets you assign 500 power to one of your characters until the end of turn. Speaking of act abilities, we also have Asuka Gear Maker, uh, which has a backup ability for a combined 2000 power boost to one of your characters in battle. Again, pretty standard fail for a trial deck, totally normal card, except... Some of you might be asking, what's that doing there? Uh, why would you play a card with a backup ability on stage? Uh, why would it not have a color requirement? And to you I say, great observational skills. Uh, we'll put a pin in this card, uh, and we'll get back to it later. Now for the booster pack cards, there's Eno Time Traveling Musician. When she's placed on stage from hand, she lets you look at and rearrange the top two cards of your deck. And she also comes with a well-known and loved ability of paying one stock and putting the top card of your deck into your clock to search your deck for a level 1 or lower character when she's placed on stage from hand. Um, I pretty much assume this will be an easy inclusion in every Guilty Gear Strive deck. Next up, Happy Chaos Unpredictable Menace is also sporting two familiar effects, although I don't think we've ever seen them printed together before, so unpredictable indeed. Uh, when you play a Climax, you can bounce him back to your hand to give one of your characters plus 2000 power until the end of turn. And at the start of your opponent's attack phase, you can pay one stock to move him to an empty slot in your backstage. Uh, I'm not quite sure what deck this would fit into yet, but it's definitely an interesting profile and I'm looking forward to experimenting with it. Of course we can't have Chaos without disruption, so Happy Chaos, Restorer of Humanity, is here to disrupt your opponent's board by sending their early play characters to the bottom of their decks. Uh, and before I forget, he comes with memory interactions too. Uh, allowing you to send a character from your waiting room to your memory if you've got one or less cards in memory when he is placed on stage from hand. Continuing the disruption, there's Eno finally recalling. When she's placed on stage from hand, she lets you send one of your opponent's characters to memory and back. And when she's sent from stage to waiting room, again if you've got one or less cards in your memory, she lets you choose one copy of this card or Eno Megalovania in your waiting room and send that card to memory. But what do we do with that memory? And what is Eno Megalomania? Well, trust me when I say she's something for your opponents to remember you by. Eno Megalomania has a rather expensive act ability with the cost of paying 4 stock, discarding 1 card and sending 1 character from your memory to your waiting room. But for that cost, it allows you to bounce all of your opponents level 3 or lower characters in their center stage back to their hand. No choosing, no targeting, just poof, they're gone. Uh, it's dramatic and I love it. And as if that wasn't enough, she also gets plus 500 power for each of your other characters when she attacks. Just for that little bit of added flair. But if reducing your opponent's center stage to ashes doesn't solve your problems, you can also play Happy Chaos Trigger Happy. He lets you send one of your opponent's cost one or lower characters from their backstage to their waiting room when he's placed on stage from hand for the cost of paying two stock and sending a character from your memory to your waiting room. I like the flavor text on this one, quite sneaky. And with all of those cards covered and out of the way, we can now move on to the big finale. Eno, Crushing Power. When she's placed on stage from hand or through the effect of Happy Chaos Tome of Origin, she lets you grab her climax, Freedom, from the waiting room. And then when she attacks, if you have Freedom in play and two or more other characters, you can choose to give her plus 1500 power until the end of your opponent's turn and shuffle all of your opponent's waiting room back into their deck. 
or you can choose to pay two stock to deal two damage to your opponent. And I'll tell you right away, I love this card. Uh, grabbing her own climax is great, comeback triggers are great, effect modality is great, messing with your opponent's deck compression is great, and of course, dealing two damage is great. But this card alone is not why I love this card. Oh no, there's more. There's Happy Chaos, Tome of Origin. I'll be honest, when I first read Eno's ability, I just thought this would be another level 3 card, uh, but it's not, it's a level 2. Uh, and it says, you may play this from hand without meeting the color requirement. And then it says, when this is placed on stage from hand, you may discard a card to search your deck for up to one Asuka Gearmaker. Uh, that's the trial deck card we discussed earlier. Uh, and you would play this card on stage, because the third ability on this Happy Chaos says, put this and one copy of Asuka Gearmaker from your stage into your waiting room, choose one Eno Crushing Power in your waiting room, and put her on stage in the position this was on. And as soon as I saw this, the gears in my head started turning, trying to figure out the resource map on this. Uh, I did save you guys a bit of suspense by showing you the Asuka card first, because that wasn't the case for me. Uh, I just assumed the Asuka would be another cost one card, uh, because otherwise, uh, well, it works out a bit like this. Uh, you need three Happy Chaos Tome of Origin in your hand, plus one card, any card. Uh, then you need three copies of Asuka in your deck, and three copies of Eno Crushing Power, and one copy of her Climax in your waiting room. And if you have that setup, or some equivalent of it, uh, then you need just 7 stock to do the combo and deal 2 extra damage to your opponent 3 times at level 2. And I just cannot overstate how much I love this combo. It's a bit overwhelming, it's a bit complex, there's a lot of setup, but it's exactly the thing that I love in Weishwarts. And honestly, I think the combo is very well thought out. Um, for example, we don't know yet if this deck would end up playing blue outside from this package. Uh, we haven't seen many of the other cards. Uh, but if it doesn't, you could potentially have problems finding blue to actually play the combo. Uh, because I assume if you're going full out on this, you wouldn't want any of your combo pieces to be stuck in level zone. But since both of the blue cards don't actually need to meet the color requirements to be played, you don't need to worry about that, and it frees up the rest of your deck space for some other colors. And more importantly, this setup allows you to make full use of Eno's Climax Fetching ability, uh, which was something that threw me off the first time I saw that card, uh, because none of her effects need you to discard anything from hand, so when playing multiple copies of her from hand, you would either pass on the second and third copy of that ability, or you would be left with two surplus Climaxes in your hand at the end of turn. Uh, but with this setup, you can play the Happy Chaos, discard a random card to search for the Asuka, play the Asuka, uh, then send the Asuka and Happy Chaos to waiting room, bring out Ino, use Ino's ability to grab the Climax, and then when playing the next Happy Chaos and resolving his ability, you can discard that Climax to search for the next Asuka. It's a loop, basically. So yeah, even without seeing any of the other cards in this set, I am already extremely excited for this combo, and I will definitely be using it in the first Guilty Gear Strive deck that I build. Uh, if you guys would want to follow along with that process, as we see more and more reviews for the set, the link to the Vice Time post will be in the description, but other than that, make sure to check out the English edition original title, Gear to Gear Strive, Booster Pack and Trial Deck, releasing on December 15, 2023. See ya!